Good evening. I'm calling to order the regular meeting of the Arlington School Committee on Thursday, March 30th, 2023. I'm Liz Exton, the chair. Sorry, we don't need our school. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington School Committee is being conducted in a hybrid model. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. All right, our first agenda item this evening is public comment. Before I call our first speakers, I have a few ground rules. For members of the public who wish to address the committee, there will be 20 minutes of public comment. Depending on the number of people who sign up, time allotments may be reduced but will not exceed three minutes each. I will let the speaker know when they have 30 seconds left. If the number of people who sign up exceeds what can be done in 20 minutes, the number of speakers may be capped and will be invited to speak based on the timestamp of their email to Ms. Diggins. The school committee respectfully requests participants of the public to utilize their camera if possible while speaking and to adhere to the public comment policy BEDH that requires participants to provide their name and address. Speakers may offer such objective criticisms of the school operations and programs as concern them, but in public session the committee will not hear personal complaints about school personnel nor against any member of the school community except for the school committee or the superintendent in their capacity as the operational leader of Arlington Public Schools. The public is reminded that the school committee does not hold jurisdiction over the performance of school personnel other than the superintendent. Additionally, the committee will not hear anything that might identify and or infringe upon a student's privacy by name or incident. <coughs> we have um, two public speakers this evening who I believe would like to speak um, together, Judy Bond and Linda Hansen. Welcome. So you'll have six minutes between the two of you. Who well, is that woman there? It's <laughs> <laughs> like a ghost. No, you just look younger, that's all. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for um, allowing us to speak this evening. My name is Linda Hansen. Next to me is Judy Bond. We both previously worked in the Arlington Public Schools in different capacities and now represent two different organizations, um, Arlington-based food security organizations. I currently serve on the board of Arlington Eats, and Judy serves on the board of Foodlink. And we are here tonight representing these two organizations. We come before you this evening to encourage you to learn more about and hopefully support the Universal School Meals Bill that is currently before the state legislature. This bill would continue the program started by Congress in 2020 that paid for school meals for all students in the country for two years before being terminated in the summer of 2022. Our state legislature picked up the tab for the program for the current school year. Now is the time to advocate for making this program permanent. As professionals whose work involves supporting the healthy development of students of all ages, physically and emotionally, as well as academically, we hope you will agree that it's time to permanently remove barriers to accessing nutritious meals during the school day so that no child will ever again experience the stigma of receiving benefits reserved only for low-income families, and so that schools can <laughs> devote their finite resources to providing healthy meals rather than processing paperwork and chasing down school lunch debt. The act relative to universal school meals bill will do the following three things. One, require all schools to make breakfast and lunch available to all students at no cost. Two, require the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to cover any costs not covered by the federal government. And finally, maximize federal reimbursements by encouraging schools to support SNAP outreach. While there are clear health and well-being benefits from universal school meals, there are also economic benefits. According to Project Bread research, for every $1 spent to alleviate food insecurity, we reap $2 in rewards and savings in terms of better health outcomes and future economic opportunities for each person who receives these benefits. In addition, it's estimated that families save around $1,200 per year per student when school meals are provided free of charge. This money can then be deployed in other areas of a family's budget, like paying for utility bills and the high cost of housing. 
There are also clear equity impacts related to food insecurity. Hunger in Massachusetts is significantly higher among black and Latinx populations, with one in three black and Latinx households reporting food insecurity versus 16% of white families and 11% of Asian families. We know and appreciate your efforts to promote equity in the Arlington Public School experience through your recent budgets. Just last year, you eliminated fees for elementary instrumental music and for high school athletic fees. In the budget narrative, you mentioned, this change supports our continued work toward equity by allowing access to all for these important aspects of a well-rounded education. Ensuring equity, excellence, and access for rigorous learning experiences for all students is also the first pri priority in the draft strategic plan developed with Dr. Homan, the APS staff, as well as students and community members over the past year. To quote the document, Arlington Public Schools acknowledges that addressing these gaps will require significant shifts in mindset, practice, and content, both for our staff and for members of the Arlington community. We recognize that to address the needs of all, we must focus on the needs of those students for whom the system has not historically been designed. We recognize that the adjustments we will make to meet the needs of some of our students are truly meant to enhance the learning experiences of all our students. If the initiatives that will follow, that you will all, you've all read about, we encourage the community to notice our commitment to improving achievement for all students through the elimination of barriers and resulting achievement gaps for our focal groups. We believe that school meals are the ultimate foundational cornerstone that underpins all students' ability to access the education they deserve. We don't charge for visits to the school nurse or social worker, <laughs> and we don't expect payment for school textbooks. Why should access to food be treated any differently? We need to eliminate the tiered system of access to healthy food. The nonprofit organizations we represent cannot solve the food insecurity problem alone. We can only provide critical but very partial supports. Passing the Universal School Meals Bill is an important step toward providing a systemic solution that matches the scale of this problem. We hope that you as individuals and through your statewide organizations will join in the chorus to get a one-year extension. You probably all know that this just, just passed, but we'll save that for the very end. These budget decisions are being made over the next few moments, actually. So time is of the essence. Following an additional one-year extension, we will need to work with our legislators to ensure that the bill to provide school meals at no charge permanently is passed so that Massachusetts can join other states like California, Colorado, New Mexico, Maine, and Minnesota in making school meals permanently available at no cost to our community. We have an incredible window of opportunity. A few hours ago, Speaker Mariano announced that the House budget will fund a universal school meals program that began running on a temporary basis during the pandemic. He was incredibly enthusiastic. Governor Healy also supports another year's worth of funding for the meals program but we need to make sure that the governor and our legislators hear from us that this is a priority. Please consider passing a resolution endorsing universal school meals for all and contact your legislators in the next few days. Now is the time. We can make this monumental change in nutrition okay. policy that will positively affect generations of students to come. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next, our EHS student representatives. Okay, um, to get a little rundown on academics recently, uh, the sophomores recently had their MCAS, which surely none of them enjoyed, but the rest of us got a late start, which is much appreciated. <laughs> Um, Activities-wise, lots of athletics have started their seasons, and the spring musical, Into the Woods, is this weekend. You all should go. It looks amazing so far. Um, 
Recently, National Honor Society has held a book reading where they went down to elementary schools and read diverse books, and I heard that was really, really cool for everyone there. And today in advisory, we recently we took the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which was very important. And um, hopefully that HS gets the treatment that it needs, I suppose. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, next, we have a Rainbow Task Force presentation. So, you know, Dr. McNeil, and we have some other guests. So, if you're sitting at that table, just want to make sure you pass the microphone okay. to whoever that, is speaking. That I can do. Great. Oh, no. I got it. Google version, so I think I should be good. Oh, you want to use slides for somebody else? No. Uh, and do they have the right version? Mm -hmm. I got it. Great. Okay, sounds good. Welcome, everyone. We're here to give an update of the Rainbow Task Force that we started two years ago. Uh, uh, and with me, I will have the individuals with me introduce themselves. I am Roderick McNeil. For the people out who are listening or watching, I am the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, and I am the liaison that was appointed two years ago to uh, the task force. My name is Molly Blau Gillis. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a proud Arlington resident, proud parent of two kids, uh, one of which identifies as transgender, and I'm also a member of the Rainbow Commission. I forgot to give my pronouns. I go by he, him. Uh, I'm Ann Phillips. I'm a senior at the high school. I'm uh, one of the presidents of the GSA and a liaison to the Rainbow Task Force and the Rainbow Commission. Um, and I use they, them, theirs pronouns. Sure, go ahead. So we could go to the next slide. Yeah. In February 2021, we were here last um, with Keith March Missler, who was a commissioner at that point in time. I was not yet on the Rainbow Commission, and M. Phillips also presented with us. And we really came in to give you an update on LGBTQI plus activities and experiences in the district. At that point in time, next, next slide, please. We had three macro asks, collaboration, a senior district level liaison, which Dr. McNeil was our brave, um, <laughs> brave volunteer, which you all approved, and LGBTQI plus inclusivity. Next slide, please. And we had three specific outcomes that we were driving towards. One was inclusive hiring. The second was district-wide safe schools, LGBTQI plus training. And the third was a curriculum review to ensure that there was inclusive, positive LGBTQIA plus experiences in the curriculum for the upcoming school year. And I also just wanted to uh, pause here just to say, this should be a very positive update for all of you. There's been a ton of progress and our asks are very minimal. So hopefully it's enjoyable. We're excited to be here. So with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Rod, um, who will talk about the task force. Right, so uh, at the inception of when I was appointed, uh, and I began start, starting to work with uh, Molly, we wanted to put together a rainbow task force that included uh, staff members, administrators, parents, caregivers, community members, and students. And uh, our goal was to create alignment, collaboration, and positive momentum within the Arlington community. And so we started by creating a mission statement uh, the mission statement of the task force is to promote and support continued awareness, empathy, access, safety, inclusion, and belonging for LGBTQIA plus students, families, caregivers, and staff. And so the, oh, we can go to the next slide. On the next slide, you will see uh, some of the data that we used in order to uh, drive our goals and our mission and to identify some of the activities that we wanted to uh, put into place. So we did use the data from the Youth Risk Behavior Survey from 2021, and that survey is given every two years. So that is why 
it was given this year uh, in the spring, I mean, just today, as our student representative <coughs> indicated. It allows districts, it's given in 11 districts that are part of the Middlesex League. It allows districts to understand the risk, the health risks that are facing youth and their communities. It promotes information sharing and coordination across school districts, uh, health officials, and other <coughs> community-based service providers. And for Arlington, we, some of the data that uh, we collected and some of the things that we learned from this data, we learned that our genderqueer youth are less, less likely to feel close to other people at school, are more likely to suffer from depression, are more likely to plan for and attempt suicide, especially at the middle school level, and are more likely to be electronically bullied. Uh, however, based on recent data over the past couple of years, the percentage of middle school uh, reporting electronic uh, bullying has decreased in Arlington. And then finally, uh, genderqueer youth in Arlington also more likely to report being forced into non-consexual um, sexual acts. Next slide, please. The task force is really focused in five key areas. The first is uh, district-wide professional development, which is focused on creating safe, inclusive learning environments for LGBTQIA plus students. The second is collecting and leveraging data, as uh, Dr. McNeil mentioned, to better understand the experiences of LGBTQIA plus students in our district. The third is curriculum that reflects LGBTQIA plus experiences. We also want to ensure parity with regards to building facilities and resources across our schools. And the last area is focused on community engagement, which is really focused on creating environments in which our LGBTQ students can thrive, and also creating community for those students and their caregivers. So five areas. We've made really significant progress in all five areas. Next slide, please. So just to sort of set the stage a little bit, year one was really, which is the year we presented to you, that was all about establishing the task force, um, codifying our mission, and developing and launching work streams and programs. Year two, which is the current year we're in, has been about building momentum, increased collaboration, and community. Next slide. So what we've accomplished. Um, I'm very proud to share together with my uh, co-presenters here that this year, district-wide LGBTQI plus training was implemented across the district. Uh, beginning in 2021, we updated the YRBS to be more inclusive and have more inclusive language around gender identity and sexual orientation. We have ongoing improved data collection analysis through the YRBS. As you all know, um, the YRBS launched today at the high school and includes those inclusive updates. In 2021, so that was two years ago, we established the SIMS grant team to review and update human development and growth health curriculum. Those um, updates were implemented last year and this year in partnership with Kim Visco. And in terms of parity of resources and facilities, last year we confirmed the direction on adjustments to the plans of the high school restrooms and changing facilities. Um, that was due in large part to Michael Mason, Dr. Homan, and Dr. Janger. And in 2023, just this year, actually just a few months ago, Dr. McNeil and I ensured all the APS elementary schools had rainbow alliances or are in the process of establishing one. So that's been huge. Next slide. Yep, community engagement. So we launched a successful series of well-attended community conversations in year one. We hosted three in year one and we hosted four this year. I also should just say that community engagement has been a huge source of progress and pride, pun intended, for this group. So in 2023, that's this year, we convened, like I mentioned, all the leadership of the rainbow groups across every single school. And the purpose of that was to create connection with each other and with district administration. Dr. McNeil, I don't know how he does it all, but he participates in every meeting. Um, in those meetings, the groups, they share pre best practices. The purpose is to amplify student voices and to create community. And on May 13th, this year, we'll be hosting our first district-wide pride celebration at the high school. And that celebration is really driven by these groups, the task force, and the Rainbow Commission. So for this next slide, I just wanted to invite Em to say a few words about some of the ads and their involvement. Of course. 
Um, so uh, the first picture in the upper left corner is a panel that I had the honor of participating on and putting together uh, a Latin teacher from the middle school that was a very accepting, very open um, lesbian who very much ensured that I came out at a young age. Um, two of my very good friends and my mother, who's in the audience back there, um, and I thought the importance of having students, caregivers, and teachers all sort of in my life, so seeing the same things that are happening but with very different perspectives and how that they all support in very different ways um, the students. I am very excited for the Pride event in May. Um, it's just an understatement. <laughs> I find so much joy out of this work, especially when it comes to seeing all of the young people that maybe even aren't going to come out as queer, but just knowing that you can be accepted whoever and whatever you want to be. Um, and I think it is so important that between those transitions between elementary school and the Gibbs and then to the middle school and high school, having those built-in connections and pathways that as a freshman in high school, you're not going into a huge new building without any friendly faces or not knowing about the GSA. And having these, uh, having these events that allows people from the entire district and even bigger to come together and just connect with each other is so important and I think is what I was missing in my early years of coming out. Is there anything else I can say? Okay. <laughs> takeaways as we enter our third year. Um, the first is Dr. McNeil and the extended APS team, as well as the Human Rights Commission, um, all have been incredible partners to the task force and the commission. In just over two years, we've created trust, momentum, and a strong foundation for this work in our schools and in our community. We've created greater connectivity and engagement with all of the rainbow groups across the district, and we're really a community, which feels great. I also just wanted to take the moment to acknowledge that this is a journey. We need to continue to bring the extended community along with us through education, conversation, and empathy building. And that approach takes time. But as you can see from the progress we've made, it's highly effective um, you know, through the work that we've done over the past two years. Our community conversations have provided a safe space for LGBTQIA plus students and their families uh, to convene, interact, and create community. And next year, we really need to do more for these students and their families, not less. We need the support of the school committee, senior administration, and the cooperation of the entire district to ensure the programs we put in place are both sustainable and enduring. Next slide, please. So these are our plans for next year. I'm not going to read every word on the page because I know we're short on time. Um, and you all have access to the slides, but we really want to build on the work that we put in place over the last two years. So continued district-wide training for staff and teachers, um, further improvements to the health, human health um, growth and development curriculum uh, through the SIMS grant group and Kim Visco, continued representation and inclusivity of LGBTQI plus experiences, people and topics in all content areas, and really, want to, we want to continue to support and champion improved data collection and analysis. Um, of course, we want to continue to ensure parity of resources and facilities among all APS schools. And we really want to deepen our partnership and expand um, engagement with the extended community. So next year, we plan to again host four community conversations with guest speakers and opportunities for the community to interact with one another. We want to continue to convene those rainbow groups um, across the district and host two community building events for students, one at the beginning of the year to kick off the school year and, of course, the annual Pride event, which everyone is really looking forward to. Lastly, we want to establish mechanisms for these students and their families, especially those transitioning from like elementary to the different middle schools and then to high school, to be able to connect with one another and share community. So we have some ma uh, macro asks that are not uh, that different from last time. Continued support and collaboration, continued transparency and open lines of communication, and continued intentional LGBTQI plus inclusivity. Some specific asks are ensuring, um, with your support, that the endurance of the task force and the program programs and community we've established really are sustainable. 
The collective work and collaboration of the task force with the community has made this progress possible, and we require both partnership and autonomy to be successful and endure. Secondly, uh, we are looking for Deputy Assistant uh, Superintendent Dr. Mona Walker to be, our to be our primary liaison moving forward to ensure continuity, sustain momentum, access, action, and accountability from senior leadership. And finally, uh, more LGBTQI plus learning and training opportunities for uh, staff and teachers district-wide. So that is our presentation. Um, I just want to take a moment and see if M or Dr. McNeil would like to share any closing comments before we open it up to Q&A. Um, we well, can you, sorry, can you just move Oh, sorry mic? about that. My fault. Uh, I've been a liaison for the Rainbow Commission since seventh grade and uh, having just all these opportunities to really see that people are caring about these issues I think is just really important. So thank you for letting me be here. And I just want to say that my experience in working with M and Molly has been incredible. Um, we've worked truly as a team. And um, all, we have lots of meetings and we, talk, we uh, talk about different ideas. And it's very refreshing uh, and, pr and gives me a lot of optimism about moving forward when we have youth like M and, uh, and other peers of M um, working with us in order to make our goals come, um, come to fruition. And I think it, is a, it, it, it takes a community to do this. So this is something that we've worked together to create and uh, I've just enjoy thoroughly enjoyed the, the experience and I've learned a lot. And so I think that's the most important thing. And so I'm very honored to be up here with these two individuals. I'm just very grateful as well for the partnership and for the opportunity to present to all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Hainer. <clears throat> You've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schleppen. I want to take a <clears throat> moment to do a personal detour in this conversation in that my mom was a middle school teacher on Long Island uh, and in the early 1970s she provided a safe spot for a young lady who was one of her students uh, who was grappling with sexuality issues and coming out. Uh, Sarah is somebody who we've maintained contact with, and she reminds me to this day. She lives in Boston. She's married. She reminds me to this day what a difference it made to have an adult, to have a teacher, to have somebody in the system to provide a safe, calm, supportive environment as she was struggling with these issues. And I hope that everybody who is struggling, or even not struggling, finds the safety in the sanctuary in their discovery of who they are. And I want to say I appreciate the work you're doing, and I hope that we can do even more going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Great presentation. Mm. Great job. Uh, I just, I, <laughs> I, I agree. I, I think that, you know, I remember when you came to the meeting in 2021 um, and asked for a liaison, and, and I think the amount of things that you have done um, in that time period is, is incredibly impressive. And I also um, acknowledge how mo much work there is left to do in the Arlington Public Schools um, around mm -hmm. inclusion and creating a safe space for all students. Um, but thank you for sharing this and for continuing to come and present to us because I think that it's very important for the community to hear the work that's happening and the progress um, that we're making so that we can continue that momentum. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Um, all right. So next on our agenda, mm -hmm. we are going to be honoring um, Bill Hainer for his 12 years of service on the Arlington School Committee. Mr. Hainer has decided not to run for re-election again, and he's going to pursue some new things. 
Um, I'm going to give everybody a chance to share some thoughts um, and some wishes uh, with Bill, but I wanted to just <clears throat> start by letting everybody know um, a little bit about, uh, about Bill. Um, and thank you to Mr. Schlickman for sharing some of this information with me. So, um, Mr. Hainer joined the school committee at a very challenging time when there were budget challenges in FY 2010, which resulted in a significant deficit for the school budget. At a special town meeting that was called in the fall of 2010 in order to bring the schools out of deficit, deficit Dan Dunn, who continues to take notes during town meeting, reported, Bill Hainer, former teacher, spoke. He said that if this was a business, the CEO would be fired and so would the board. He called on the entire school committee to resign and stand for re-election. <laughs> Bill Hainer ran for a seat on the school committee in 2011 and won election. During his first year on the committee, Arlington participated in a Massachusetts Association of School Committees district governance program, a series of retreats and workshops where the members worked together to build relationships with each other and to agree on a, vi agree on a vision and set of overarching goals for the district. Mr. Hainer said the experience gave him insight into the challenges of the administration, the viewpoints of his colleagues on the committee, and a common language for communicating with each other. As a result, he has been a thoughtful colleague who asks critical questions, but does so in the context of a collegial, supportive relationship. He is also responsible for the um, rights and responsibilities that we all read and sign at the organizational meeting each year um, at our uh, at our annual organizational meeting. Um, Mr. Hainer taught elementary school in Groton Dunstable for 28 years and then earned his law degree in 2000. His legal education has benefited the school committee with his expertise in contract negotiations and he led a successful review of legal counsel for the district. Bill has been an active volunteer in the community. As a school committee member, he worked with our elementary schools to create a mock town meeting in which students come to town hall and debate a warrant a warrant generated by the students. He is very active with the local <laughs> Rotary Club and volunteers with the local Veterans Council. He participates in an annual polar plunge to raise funds for the eradication of polio. He works with Arlington High School students to install a Memorial Day display of flags for veterans. And he has been an active volunteer with Habitat for Humanity, the Children's Room, and Mass Audubon in Belmont. Bill served as chair of the school committee in 2014-15 and 2021-22. He has served on the permanent town building committee for much of his tenure on the school committee, and he has signed the payroll warrant regularly coming up to the sixth floor every Wednesday. The Arlington Public Schools and the school committee have benefited from Mr. Hainer's dedication and commitment to our students and their families, and we appreciate Bill's 12 years of service to the town of Arlington. Um, so I'm going to, I'll go first as the, the most junior member um, of the committee. So I first met Bill in 2018 when I was working to advocate for full-time TAs. And I showed up at a lot of meetings and a lot of subcommittee meetings. And one day he said to me, he's like, hey, can I talk to you about the library books? And I, sure. Um, and he sort of took me and some of the other people that I was working with aside and he said, I didn't really want to talk to you about the library books. I wanted to make some suggestions about how you could advocate um, more for the TAs. So Bill has always been, um, <laughs> Bill has always been supportive of teachers and students and wanting to help them um, get the best. And so I have appreciated very much Mr. Hainer's advocacy for students and teachers on my time on the committee. So thank you. I've really enjoyed working with Bill over the years on subcommittee negotiations, special projects, and more. But the thing I most admire about him is his dedication to our students, especially in our elementary schools. Here, I've got a couple examples here, and in a good educational fashion, I have supporting primary sources. <laughs> um, first, my understanding was that he he, and it sounds like I was correct, that he created and then ran a program of town meetings for third graders, originally starting with Thompson and Hardy, and then expanding to uh, all the schools? Uh, Gallon and uh, Stratton. Stratton. Yeah. Um, 
I think this hands-on activity is a wonderful introduction to civics as well as just plain fun. As you can see in this picture, <laughs> <laughs> this is from 2017, the paper formerly known as The Advocate. Um, my second example involves Stratton. In 2016, they decided to write a school constitution. I'm not totally sure why, but they did. There were many classroom meetings, much discussion, and Bill was serving as a consultant or mentor or, or something. Um, helper. So, oh, helper. Okay. <laughs> so we were invited to the great unveiling of this constitution, but unfortunately, Bill couldn't be there. So for my second evidence, <laughs> sorry, I, I thought I was last. Oh, I didn't queue up. Okay, come on. Like Come on, phone. Him, you know? <laughs> okay, here we go. So, this is, here we go. This is the entire elementary school saying, thank you, Mr. Hayner. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, so, and I echo them. Thank you, Bill. I can't top that. Uh, <laughs> so I do remember Bill Hainer on the floor of town meeting in 2010 calling for all of us to resign. And I thought, well, that guy's got a point. Maybe we should. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe worth taking into account. But uh, Bill ran for school committee. And I, uh, some of us on the committee at the time didn't quite know what to expect. But Bill became, very quickly became a, a dear colleague who uh, took the time to study issues. Who, uh, who cared deeply about students and teachers and who brought a very uh, unique perspective to, to the school committee, which we badly needed. He um, was a retired teacher, uh, had a law degree, had been a veteran, uh, and was involved in every service club in the town of Arlington. So uh, everywhere you went, you would see Bill doing one thing or another for the, for the community. And so Bill had a broad perspective on the community. He, um, he invited me on a number of occasions to have breakfast to try to educate me about things that I wasn't seeing in the town. And, um, and, uh, and then I talked to a few other members, and they said they had those breakfasts too, so I wasn't the only one. <laughs> so <clears throat> Bill um, was, was, did his homework. He did his research, and when Bill took a position, you know where he stood. He was very clear about it, but he never let it get in the way and, and impede personal relationships. He was just, he made a decision, he took a vote, his uh, decision was final, and then we would walk out together and he would talk about grandchildren, children, trips he was taking, and other things, because he had a good perspective on the, on the whole job, he had a good solid perspective on the committee, and he never carried any at least that I saw, I didn't care any, uh, any of his, of any of our discussions outside of the room, he just uh, was our friend. And so uh, his, we got to meet his wife, Bonnie, over the years, and uh, Bill is, as you know, a very proud father and grandfather and a great colleague, and I am going to miss serving with you, Bill. I wish you the very best. Thank you. On November 15th, 2010, we're all back to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was minding my own business, sitting in my seat at a special town meeting, when all of a sudden I heard my name invoked by a booming voice in the back of the hall. The voice belonged to some guy named Hayner. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a retired school teacher. When I finished, when I retired, I finished a law degree and I specialized in school education. I came with a prepared speech, and now it's being trashed just from the past couple of speakers. Listening to Mr. Schlichtman and Mr. Curro, every town in this commonwealth should be in a similar situation that we are. We have two different things going on in our community than they have, and before I go into that, I want to state that I will, not, that I will support this motion for the kids, because the alternative is not acceptable. We were in the special town meeting because of a school department overspending their fiscal 2010 budget by $1.5 million. FinCom recommended a corresponding reduction in the fiscal 2011 budget and some adjustments to reserve funds to resolve the deficit. 
quote, in the 28 years that I taught, Mr. Hayner continued, I negotiated different contracts, constantly hearing that if we were a business, we would be treated differently. We would be held accountable. If this was a business, the board of directors would be forced to resign. The CEO would be fired for what has gone on. I don't know any of these people, so there's nothing personal in this. What I do know is that the children are going to pay for this. Then Mr. Hayner dropped the hammer. To bring credibility to the school department again, I would ask that every member of the committee resign, seek re-election in the spring, and judge. Mr. Hayner was interrupted by applause. <laughs> <laughs> he continued, let the town judge them. Let the town judge them for what they have done or have failed to do. Fast forward a few months of the April 2, 2011 annual town election. There were four candidates for three seats on the school committee, two excellent incumbents, Joe Currow and Lee Bahayam. That Hayner guy was on the ballot, along with James L. Dolan. When you Google James L. Dolan, you get lots of derogatory comments. But that's for the James L. Dolan who owns Madison Square Garden, the New York Knicks, and the New York Rangers. Further refining the search, you find the James L. Dolan, who served as chair of the Arlington Town Republican Committee. When he ran for school committee, he was a vocal opponent of any future overrides. He said budget cuts were unavoidable. He said we could replace professional staff with volunteers, combine AP classes with those of neighboring towns. And he wanted a part-time CFO, someone who was already an accountant in town, to take care of the school's budget. We all voted for Hayner. <laughs> it was a no-brainer. Mr. Dolan placed a distant fourth in the school committee race and also trailed Maria Romano and Lawrence McKinley as a fifth place losing bid for a precinct seven town meeting seat. As it turned out, when we heard Bill say the CEO should be fired and the school committee should resign, we missed the real message. I will support this motion for the kids because the alternative is not acceptable. Four terms have been centered around that mantra, supporting motions for kids because the alternative is not acceptable. We all learned some other things about Bill. Beneath that exterior is a kumbaya kind of guy. He loved the district governance project, also known as retreat. He developed tremendous empathy for the colleagues he called upon to resign. His best moments in town meeting weren't at night. Bill brought our elementary students into mock town meeting, and Bill constantly reminds us that the children do better than the adults. <laughs> Bill isn't the teddy bear. He's a polar bear. And if you wanted to torment Bill, all you needed to do was send a check to the Arlington Rotary Club, and Bill would jump into Boston Harbor in January or sit in a dunk tank in February. In recognition of the contributions Bill made to the public education, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees bestowed his Lifetime Achievement Award. And I have a little lapel pin to prove it. Uh, even though our meetings will probably be shorter, they will be short on the wisdom and humor that Bill brought us over the past 12 years, and we are going to miss him. Thank you, Bill. I'm glad that all of you guys did such a nice job talking about Bill because I'm going to talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> so the first email I have from Bill Hainer is from April of 2015. I went Gosh. back and looked. <laughs> I met him for the first time in person at his house in May when my then two-year-old ransacked his sunroom under Bonnie's watchful eye. I didn't know anything then about what happened in 2010. Clearly, you guys did. Um, or what brought Bill to the school committee. All I knew then was that I was pissed that the plan was to send my then second grader to the middle school for her fourth grade year during a renovation. And Bill was willing to talk to me and meet with me and my friends. He encouraged us to be respectful but direct. He gave us hope that we could be part of a change, even if we didn't actually really know what that change was. Uh, Bill encouraged us to go to the Permanent Town Building Committee. We were their first guests ever at one of their public meetings. They'd never seen a member of the public who wasn't on the committee. We were quite a curiosity, especially when we just kept showing up, right? And at one point, Adam Chapdelaine asked if we planned 
to continue to attend <laughs> throughout the project, and Bill's chuckle from the corner answered that question quite quickly. Bill supported us when we went to town meeting. He was there when, in August of 2015, we were told plans had changed. The Stratton kids would stay on site in modular classrooms for the renovation. I really believe that we hung in there for months, continuing to advocate because Bill encouraged us to do so, and he gave us a lot of hope. It was at that August 2015 meeting that I sat in the audience back there in those chairs and I exchanged emails and phone numbers with two Thompson parents, Juliet Moyer and Mariah Terrell, who were at the meeting because they were concerned their kids were in a class of 30 and they, they wanted to know what was going to be done about it. Attending that meeting and connecting with them literally changed the trajectory of my experience in Arlington and I do not think I would have been there had Bill not provided encouragement. Everything kind of snowballed from there. Um, as I became more engaged in Arlington political life, my relationship and friendship with Bill proved a little confusing for some people. Um, while Bill and I don't agree about everything and we've supported different candidates over the years, my loyalty to him has been unwavering. I've been direct and outspoken about my commitment to Bill and I remember being at a, at a gathering where somebody asked something about Bill and somebody else chimed right in and said, Bill Hainer is a non-negotiable for Jane, just don't even start. And it's so true, right? I don't negotiate over my loyalty to someone who supported me, supported my kids and my family, encouraged me, always reminded me that family comes first. And back in 2015 told me and my friends that we could and should ask for the changes that we wanted to see. As you know, Bill, this work is all about relationships and I am so proud of the one that I have with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow, so I don't have anything written. It's going to be <laughs> extemporaneous. I was so. trying to get in under oh the two goodness. minutes. Uh, no, so uh, I, I also think back to that, that uh, night at town meeting where I first heard your name. Heard, I mean, you always, we were always over sitting, there, sitting over there on the left with... Um, the guy you sit next to... Oh, he, ran for, <laughs> he, ran for, he ran for school committee once. Anyways, I know who you um, mean. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, so yeah, you made quite a quite a, a, a splash that night, and and <laughs> shortly thereafter, we were we were beginning to organize for an override, um, which was made more complicated by the deficit that we had just had just had. And I was at a meeting, and people were like, "Oh, but who, that Bill Hainer is going to run for school committee? He's so scary." And uh, and and uh, 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 one of the older uh, uh, town leaders said. Bill, oh, he's a pussycat. Don't worry about Bill Hainer. He's great. And she was right. You were, you were, you were right. <laughs> after, after, that, after that snarling presentation at town, at town meeting, uh, really, you've been uh, quite a contributor, a colleague, a supporter, um, and a great negotiator with me in, 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 in the, uh, the, the very long series of negotiations we've had over the years um, since I joined. So... I, I greatly, like with my colleagues, I greatly appreciate your friendship, your companionship, your support in all of the efforts that we do for our, our kids in Arlington, and you are going to leave a huge hole in the committee. Your relationship with the community beyond the parents is one thing that is going to be sorely missed because, um, uh, you know, a lot of us are parents, but you're, you brought that different lens to the committee, and, 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 and it's been a great contribution and will be solely missed and thank you for all your service thank you you're not done yet <laughs> you got one more mr hayner you were my first chair as a new superintendent and i couldn't have asked for a better one not possibly your perspective as a former educator and as a community member who knew a history deep and long which all of your colleagues just spoke to, was exceptionally beneficial to me in my first year. Um, I have deeply appreciated every conversation that we've had because you come in to our, you would come into our meetings with a courage of conviction and with ideas for how I could improve on my work. And with a kind heart, you were always also willing to reconsider your perspectives. And so the conversations I had with you were some of my favorites um, as chair and since then. And I, I have to say, um, I really appreciate Bonnie just as a human being, and I've only met her like one time. Um, but I know uh, how deeply you love your family, and that also gave me permission to prioritize my own family. Um, your commitment to Arlington and the commitment of all of your colleagues and what they've just demonstrated in their remarks is a perfect example of why I love being the superintendent in Arlington. 
Um, this is such a supportive team, and it's been absolutely wonderful to work with you. I'm the one who's known you for the least amount of time um, on, on this table, but that amount of time that I have had has been absolutely wonderful. And I know that you're not going to be a stranger because I'm still going to get invited to Rotary, I hope. Um, <laughs> and I look forward to those moments. Thank you so much for your leadership, uh, for not asking me to resign, and for all of the wonderful time that we've spent <laughs> together these last two years. You may. First off, I want to share, I had a page and a half speech. After the first or second person, I had to wipe out a half of it because it's already been said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to partly ad lib. I want to just share this. I participated in four long-term commitments in my life, joining the Air Force and going to Vietnam, which was life-defining. The second one was becoming an elementary teacher. It was wonderful. And then I got paid to think and act like a child. <laughs> Most people know me, including my family, say it's not an act. <laughs> Marriage has been a wonderful and exciting 53 years is my long-term commitment with my best friend, Bonnie. The fourth has been a member of the school committee for 12 years. Being a school committee member is not an easy job. One has to listen to parents, teachers, administrators, taxpayers, who at times all seem to have different and conflicting agendas. I can honestly say that each member sitting at this table has worked tirelessly to provide the best education and environment for the children of Arlington. I'm proud to have worked with you. My only regret is that I won't be an active participant in what is yet to come. You are awesome. I don't take back what I said in 2011, <laughs> but I think the uh, program that we underwent, I don't know whether I was the one who caused it in anticipating an, a, a very angry school committee meetings in the future, I think that what came out of it was fantastic, and I would recommend that this committee do it again because you have several new members uh, coming. A couple of other things that I've noticed. Um, I've had some positive, might be considered negative effect. Uh, Mrs. Spiegel is now growing a beard. I don't know if I've done that or it's because of Mr. Mason next door to him. Uh, the average age of the school committee will now go down. You won't have to spend as much time helping the old man with technology. Um, the committee will change in its uh, gender my, uh, majority. It will be interesting. From what I have found, this is the first time. Uh, I'll leave it to the future to see if it, it, it's a positive result. Thank you all. Be well, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. There are more guests, Bill, sorry. <laughs> I know. I saw them. John Garbley <laughs> and Dave Rogers are also here. <laughs> My God, they're politicians working in the <laughs> Unlike us, huh, Paul? Yeah. We're just community servants. I don't know where the boy went. You just have uh, to make sure you speak into the, yeah. Oh, the mic yeah. So that. Well, uh, good evening. Uh, to all the members of the school committee, it's great to be with you uh, and um, joined by Representative Garbley. And I would be at a loss for words to say anything after the amazing tributes richly deserved that you've heard from your colleagues. Uh, but I can only say I've, I've enjoyed serving uh, with you uh, as a partner at the local level. Uh, I love... Uh, you are a colorful character, <laughs> and, and I say that as high praise. Uh, you're outspoken, you're firm in your convictions and your beliefs. Um, um, we haven't agreed on every issue, but when we disagreed, we disagree without being disagreeable. I have enormous respect for the contributions you've made to this amazing town and this amazing school system, and uh, I like your, uh, your great sense of humor, which is important in this line of work, I think, and uh, so... It's really been a pleasure, and I wish you nothing but the best, and uh, uh, I hope we stay in touch. I know we will, and um, I'll let uh, Representative Garbley uh, say a few words, and then we have a citation from the State House. Great. Thank you, Representative Rogers. Good evening, everybody. Uh, congratulations, Bill. As a former member of this esteemed committee, I can say that you have been one of the great ones. Uh, Twelve years, I can't believe it. It goes by really really fast and throughout those 12 years you have always put the kids of Arlington first 
And I think as we leave this room tonight and you become one of, like me, the former members of this committee, uh, that will be your legacy, that you were a champion for kids. On every single issue that I can remember, whether it be METCO, special education, the rebuild of our elementary schools and the high school and maybe the middle school to come, we hope, um, you've given it your all. You have been an extremely hardworking, diligent committee member with a great sense of humor um, and a colorful personality, as Rep. Rogers just uh, said. And you know, I think the greatest gift you can have, really, are the comments from your committee members because they're the ones who have worked with you day in and day out over the last 12 years. And it's pretty amazing, um, all of their accolades and everything you have accomplished. So I really, I know you're not done. My hope is that you would retire and go have some fun, but I don't think that's you. You're gonna stay active in this community that you love so much. And uh, for Bonnie's sake, I hope you stay out of the house a little more. Uh, <laughs> but I wish, I wish you and Bonnie the very best and you've made this committee a stronger committee. Thank you. And Rep. So, Rogers is his representative. So <laughs> Representative Rogers will Lucky me. The so, uh, Bill, uh, we have here a citation from the entire House of Representatives. And uh, uh, I'll read it. It says, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Bill Hainer in recognition of your many years of outstanding contributions to the town of Arlington as a member of the school committee. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors, endeavors given this 30th day of March 2023 at the State House, signed by the Speaker of the House, uh, by myself and by Representative Garbley. So congratulations again, Bill. This was supposed to be. This meeting to be short. This is only supposed oh, to it's be my last. Okay. It's my last meeting. I get to make it go really long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, it is a traditional for a school committee member who is retiring to receive a chair. But Bill insisted that he did not want a chair. But we could not go without giving Bill a gift. So we have gotten you something else. You're going to make it hard for me to open, too, aren't you? No, oh, I hope not. I'll tell you what it is if it's not obvious. Before I forget, <laughs> before I forget I've given you each a card. Thank you. Thank you. No, you don't have to thank me. Read it before you thank me. <laughs> it might be an extension from 10 years ago. <laughs> when someone retires, they don't need to know what time it is anymore? Yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> but then I, I said maybe they used, they just got the box. It's full of knives. <laughs> You're showing my ineptness. It's all right, we can't see it. Pull it off. <laughs> My nice neat desk. Bonnie will tell you how it works. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to say it. <laughs> no, so you need to By bring the way, those for those that want to know how long, why you survived 53 years, marry someone who throws nothing away. <laughs> She's kept me. <laughs> slow on that work. <laughs> this is true. Is this a plate with it? Yes, I think so. <laughs> nice, Bill. <laughs> Better than the chair. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> it looks blank, but uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Turn You're welcome. Thank you. Hold it up. 
scare the heck out of me. Every time I look at it, I'll think of all of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very You're much. welcome. Okay, there's cake over there. We're going to take five minutes to cut cake, and then we'll get back okay. to our meeting. Thank you. Do you want help? Do you want help? Go back, and we are going to um, have a presentation and presentation and possible vote to approve the APS five-year strategic plan. All right, Dr. Hellman. So I just want to note, since the chair said it into the microphone, I'm going to give you a hard time at your last meeting, that I'm, I'm, I don't want the meeting to be short because I don't want to hang out with all of you. <laughs> um, it's because my mom is at my house and I haven't seen her since Thanksgiving. So <laughs> it's not because I don't want to be here. This is all very important as well. Um, so I'm going to talk through a few of the things that have happened in the past couple of weeks as we have prepared and finalized the five-year strategic plan. I'm going to provide a little bit of background and process um, about the process to develop this document, uh, tell a little bit about what the plan provides for our Arlington Public Schools community, give a couple of trends that came from the public comment period that we just had for about the past month, um, and update the committee on a few revisions to the plan that we've made within the past week, as well as talk about what our next steps will be. So just as a bit of background, um, I would be remiss if I didn't open by saying that we are uh, deeply grateful to the Arlington Education Foundation for their support of this plan the whole way through from inception and development and thinking about what the plan would look like and therefore what kinds of resources we would need um, to funding uh, the entire process from consultants to paying members of our community to do this work with us so that we could equitably involve as many people as possible. Um, to helping us actually begin implementation of some of the parts of the plan, like instructional leadership teams this year. So we have been hand in hand with AEF the entire time that we have been working on this, and they have been incredible partners, uh, both thought partners and also participatory partners in this work. And we very much um, are glad that they were innovative in their thinking and ready to fund this project. So the process actually began in October of 2021. It's been over a year and a half of planning and work. Uh, with initial planning for the district investment grant that got this process kicked off. The process has involved hundreds of APS community members and stakeholders, including students. The mission, vision, and priorities were approved in June of 2022. Initiative development was completed in fall of 2022. We've been doing budget development for the plan and for fiscal 24 uh, through January and February, held a public comment period in February and March of 2023 and hopefully potential approval of the final five-year plan this evening. A few highlights of the plan. Um, I wanna just highlight some sort of tangible benefits that our community members will get or see if, they, if we are successful in implementing this plan. First, an instructional vision is included in this plan that should provide a deeper baseline of expectations for instructional excellence across all of our academic areas and uh, identify what teaching looks like that will support all students to excel, as well as the teaching models, structures, schedules that we would need in order to do that. This plan includes um, initiatives that should bring a strong sense of belonging and build relationships between students, staff, and families, particularly those students, staff, and families who have been traditionally and historically marginalized by our system. It includes a multi-tiered, the development of a multi-tiered system of support that is stronger than one, the one we have now and that will ensure that every student will get what they need in a systematic, not haphazard or uneven way. Uh, it should get our stakeholders a strong, diverse faculty that feels valued, is well supported professionally, and is compensated accordingly. It should yield modern, well-maintained and sustainable facilities, technology, food and nourishment for our students, and spaces for learning and it should improve our expectations, systems, and resources for partnering with all of our families, including a fully staffed Welcome Center. Some of the public comment trends that we saw when we did the public comment process over the past month, um, people noticed that this was a values-driven and data-informed plan and that the values of, these plan of the plan itself and all the initiatives in it are very aligned with the values that the community espouses and that the plan was built upon. Uh, a lot of people noticed that this is an ambitious plan. This is going to be challenging to implement. We did not um, make it easy for ourselves to get this done, and we're proud of that because I think it's important that we hold ourselves to a high expectation so that we can hold our students to a high expectation. Um, 
There were a lot of questions about how the follow through will look, how we will do it, more questions about that really than the ideas and initiatives themselves. So a lot of support in general for the ideas and the plan, questions about how will this look, how will that look, how will you actually expand after school programming, for example. We got a lot of comments about the Welcome Center and making sure that it will meet and need and provide schools with resources specifically for meeting the needs of families who don't speak English as a first language. A lot of acknowledgement of the fact that um, translation and interpretation services are used sometimes, not always, not necessarily consistently, and that we could use more of them. Um, there were lots of comments about the importance of and excitement for expansion of after school offerings, um, including enrichment offerings, and a lot of questions about the importance of academic rigor and the role of tracking and leveling in Initiative 1.1 in the plan, which we've tried to address in some of the revisions that we've done. So I want to speak to a few final revisions of the plan. We have adjusted the financial projections that in order to match the most recent planning of the long range planning and budget um, committees. And that is in response to a lot of budget planning and fiscal 24 planning conversations that have happened over the past couple of months. We adjusted the financial projections for space and technology improvements in initiative 3.1 with the anticipation that some of those adjustments uh, assume that certain investments will be made as part of the capital budget on the town side. We made some adjustment in language linked to uh, two of the initiatives in priority one. 1.1, leveling and tracking was adjusted to reflect the intentions of the administration to complete an in-progress pilot at the high school and make sure that we engage the community in in-depth conversations about the impacts of leveling before we make any decisions or plan for any implementations about future programming. And for 1.3, uh, in multi-tiered systems of support, we eliminated some language and strand milestones about a what I, uh, what I need block or an intervention block, uh, leaving to MTSS development teams to determine what structures will work for uh, APS. And I just want to note that in a uh, subcommittee meeting earlier this week, I misspoke about what I need blocks. While we've had the intention to put enrichment programming in um, during the times that other students are getting intervention, we haven't been able to effectively execute on that because of some of the constraints associated with being able to provide coursework during a time when teachers aren't contracted to provide coursework. So while we would love to do that, it's not something that we currently have in our existing structures to do, and I misspoke about us being able to do that now where we do have this block, which is at the Gibbs. So we're hoping to expand it, um, and we're hoping to make sure that we do so purposefully in a way that would allow for enrichment and we would need to leave it to our planning teams to figure out what that would look like and provide recommendations that would give us the flexibility to do that effectively. Um, there was the, also the addition of some more specific content on page five, the overview, uh, which contained some of the what this plan will give the community bullet points that I shared just a few moments ago. And then on to the next steps, we are working on the messaging of this plan to the APS community with the help of some high school students. Um, and we're also hoping with the help of some elementary and middle school students too. Uh, we're gonna ask some students about what they're really hoping us to see us do and get some promotional materials together to explain the plan uh, both in sort of short form and provide access to it in long form, including printing a few copies for folks. We're going to do uh, the development and launch of some task forces that will focus on the specific work of implementing the plan. Um, we're going to need some folks to get their, uh, themselves together and collaboratively work on several of the initiatives in the plan, and so we'll be launching these task forces as we head into next school year. We're hiring for key roles that were included in the FY24 budget and that are central to the work of the plan, such as the Director of Communication and Family Engagement uh, that will oversee the Welcome Center and the Director of Research, Data, and Accountability to help us track progress on the plan. And we are um, going through a review of some of our year one implementation strands and milestones, and then we'll use that to develop our district goals for 23-24 towards the end of this school year. And finally, we'll be working on a web page for the plan on the district website and an online dashboard that will help us track and plan our progress on our outcome measures. That's it. I'll take any questions. Are there any questions or comments before I entertain a motion? Mr. Sickman. After the motion is made and invoked, is this becomes ours. Uh, on behalf of the community, and it's an important thing for us to have to put out to the community, giving a clear vision of where we want to go over the next five years. And the fact that we're going to be voting this on behalf of the community is a tremendous vote of confidence for all the people 
who work very hard to do this. And I want to call everybody's attention when they get to see the document to Appendix A, the strategic planning participants. The root of this plan started with the visioning group. And as a member of that group, I think that the most profound things that came out of the, of the visioning and mission statement were the words of students. Because every time we started to go off on a tangent of what we wanted to do for them, to them, they came back to us and said, <laughs> they came back to us and said, no, we don't want you to make us something. We want you to empower us. And that's where the word empower came that is now part of our branding. A lot of this is a, a clear expression of the hopes and dreams of the students of what we're going to do for them on their path to their high school diploma. So it's an amazing and outstanding uh, document. And the superintendent was truly visionary in terms of making this happen and supporting all of the people who, who, who did this work. And I think that as a, as a school committee member, I can be proud of a district that does this. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> what I want to say, I'm, I'm going to vote enthusiastic for the plan. I think the um, thing to take into account is that the, the project began in the fall of 21 and it's ending now in March of 23. And so it's, I don't know, 15, 16 month process. So it was very participatory. Mm -hmm. There was lots of, there were lots of opportunities for people to give their opinions and thoughts. And uh, lots of us played mm -hmm. roles at different parts in the journey. And so I feel like, uh, it, I, th I think we all own this in many ways. It may not incorporate every single thing that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of a strategic mm -hmm. plan, especially for a district uh, this complex. And so I, I'm, I'm proud of the process. I congratulate the superintendent on leading it. And uh, I think it's a good example uh, for other districts. And it's also, this gives us a, a plan and a framework and something to refer to as we make policy decisions, develop budgets mm -hmm. for the next five years. It's a great step forward for the district. Um, and I think the important thing also to note is that this, this, the team sort of over there has like put this together in an extraordinary way and, and ultimately we have to go back to the community who has built this and we actually have to ask them to, to pay for it, right? Because we, we, mm -hmm. we can't pay for it <laughs> with, with what we have right, right. now. So um, that's, that's, that's what this part of the table <laughs> is going to have to figure out how, um, how to make sure that uh, we can move the work forward that has, um, that we have, we have participated in, in creating certainly, but mm -hmm. that, that Dr. Homan and her team have brought. And um, I think mm -hmm. that um, that feels like um, a really um, exciting and, and important task that um, I know that it becomes sort of the school committee's strategic plan after tonight, but I also kind of do feel some like weight about it because I'm like, we, we need to be able to pay to be able to do mm -hmm. this. Um, and so that's just, mm -hmm. you know, again, a, another important part of this. So thank you. Thank you for bringing this to us. Thank you for giving us something that um, we can take back um, that is is strong and, and is um, meaningful. And uh, I don't, we certainly wouldn't be here right mm -hmm. now if we didn't if we didn't have this mm -hmm. work. So thank you, Mr. Garden. Uh, thank you. Yes, so I, I should have brought my my original campaign literature with me because <laughs> one of the things that I wanted to accomplish when I ran uh, in 2016, now so long ago, seven years ago, was that we have some strategic planning in the district, and so finally we do. And so thank you, Dr. Holman, for for undertaking in your second year the very, very hard work that's required to do a, a project like this. Um, so I'm very grateful for you and the entire team uh, in getting us here. I'm very excited about so many, so many things in this plan. Um, the, they're, they're many, it's addressing many, many issues that I heard back when I ran in 2016 and since then about communication, about um, uh, supports that are available for students, about the lack of uh, instructional vision and, and, and cohesion. Um, so there's, and, and the lack of, of competitive salaries. So there's so many things in here that I'm just thrilled that we're focusing on 
uh, and implementation is going to be very challenging, but I'm very confident that with the team we have, we will, we will make enormous accomplishments over the next five years. Thank you. I just wanted to chime in on what Ms. Morgan and Mr. Cardin said about talking about paying for it and point out that the plan, even before it was, even when it was just in draft form, is already mm -hmm. providing both a direction when we have discussions about funding the schools for the future and also being held up as an example of, gee, the town should do this too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think I thank you for bringing us to a point where we have both a map and kind of a gold star next to it. <laughs> so thanks. Ms. Keys or Amy Archimaki? <laughs> Um, I, I want to um, echo my thanks to the um, AEF for supporting all of the work that went into creating this plan um, and to Dr. Holman and her team for all of the work and the time and the number of nights and evenings that you spent meeting in groups and small groups um, and then putting it all together and editing um, and to uh, Dan Anderson for the work that that he did in supporting all of you and the bringing this um, all together. I, this is, um, I think it's incredibly thoughtful. I think it's incredibly thorough. Um, I, as an educator, I look at this and I think it, it, it just, it encompasses everything that, that we would want a school system to be. Um, I agree it's very aspirational, um, but I think that, you know, we have to have a, a goal that we're heading towards and, and I'm really excited um, at what APS is going to look like in five years, mm -hmm. um, with this as our as our as our guide as our roadmap. So, thank you, all of you, um, for for the work um, that you've done. Someone, Mr. Hainer. I'll entertain a motion to approve what has been presented to the board. Second. <laughs> <laughs> We have a motion by Mr. Hainer, seconded by Mr. Cardin. Um, roll call vote. Mr. Hainer? Yes. Mr. Cardin? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Mr. Slickman? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Dr. Allison Yampi? Yes. And I vote yes. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. It's both a starting line and a finish line at the same That's time, right. which is yeah. very exciting. Yeah. One door closes. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, the lab collaborative agreement, first read. So I'm gonna let Dr. Homan explain a little bit more about this, but I just wanna make sure the committee understands that this is a first read, so mm -hmm. this is being presented to us tonight. Um, Dr. Homan will share some of the information. We can ask questions and get feedback. Um, and just as part of our calendar that we had um, planned for school committee presentations for this year, um, the executive director, is that her title? Mm -hmm. Um, of lab is sh coming to our next meeting to give a presentation on lab so we can actually have some of our questions answered directly. Mm -hmm. um, for this. So Dr. Homan, I'll let you. Sure, so, um, so the uh, collaborative agreement is something that um, Pam um, Gerard, who is the executive director of lab, has been working on extensively with the former interim executive director, Bill Lupini, uh, and the state for several months. Uh, one component of the new collaborative agreement, and my apologies, we discovered today that the PDF clean version you have is actually missing the even number of pages, so I went back mm -hmm. to Ms. Gerard to ask for the even numbered and odd number pages. Mm -hmm. But the red line that you have is the full document, mm -hmm. um, and we'll get the other full document mm -hmm. to you so that you can look at the clean version as well. Um, they made a number of substantive changes to this, uh, mostly because the collaborative agreement hadn't been uh, revisited in several years. Mm -hmm. um, also to make sure that it reflected the most um, current programming of the lab, uh, the most current procedures, as the most current regulations per the state of how collaboratives operate. Um, and you'll notice that there's an addition of Watertown to the collaborative as part of the plan. The primary reason, I will share a little bit about this, but if you have further questions for it, that would actually be best to direct to Ms. Gerard when she comes to visit in a couple of weeks. Um, 
the the reason primary reason for it is that uh, Watertown has CVTE uh, voc vocational technical facilities. We had maintained as a lab collaborative a partnership with Minuteman that allowed the collaborative students to use Minuteman's facilities, but that. Um, that relationship sort of with the pandemic uh, and for various reasons that I am not clear on because I was not yet a board member had dissolved. So Watertown was willing to provide some of those facilities and has them in their new high school on the condition of um, joining the collaborative. We, they don't actually have a lot of lab students and so the impact to member credits is relatively minimal but we'll have some numbers for you available at the next meeting as well as um, they can speak to what the financial impact could potentially be. The hope is that they'll be able to expand some programming and therefore tuitions which would be either a positive or negligible uh, financial impact on the collaborative as a whole. So they, um, I'm happy to take any questions that uh, Ms. Gerard and potentially um, Ms. Mr. Lupini can address if he comes with her at the next meeting. And I will provide those to them so they can work it into their presentation as well. Mr. Hainer. Um, I'm not sure if it's anywhere else, but in the draft form at the very top it says, uh, any subsequent amendments hereto shall not take effect unless and until approved by a school committee. Each school, does that mean one school committee could block? The way this is written, it implies that any one school committee could block it. I'd be a little bit nervous about that. that yep. It's just I'm my observation. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're sharing that. Yeah, I mean, that's the way it currently is. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not a change from. That is it. Okay. Mm -hmm. The red is not a change. It's clarifying the procedure, but that's the way it already is. And it had no problem. I guess. But it hasn't been. It hasn't okay, been. so okay. you have a question about that, Mr. Slickman? I mean, the regional vote agreements all require unanimous consent for changes of the uh, overall agreement, oh. uh, which is why we uh, had some leverage when they decided they wanted to build the new high school. Um, has town council looked over this? No, but I could have them in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd like our, uh, before we voted, I'd like to have a, a favorable opinion from town council. Mr. Cardin. Thank you. Yeah, I, I reached out to Dr. Holman um, just when I first saw it yesterday because I didn't get into Novus until then. Um, so, so Lab has not added a, a member town since 1996. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't hear, I mean, Watertown approached lab about this a year and a half ago. So I'm a little disappointed that we didn't hear about this possibility before now. Um, I would, you know, I, I, I will send you some more questions. Um, the, I mean, the way the credits are calculated, I mean, first, when the town becomes a member, they pay less tuition. They get a discount that we, get, that we currently get as a member district. So those six students will be paying less um, in tuition for, for lab. So that has, that's gonna have an impact. And then, um, the way credits are determined, half of the credit is just by being a member. So again, it, it, somebody should prepare a calculation of what credits look like now and what credits will look like once Watertown joins. And also since Watertown is I just, just getting started in their construction, I, I do question the timing of this. Is this really the right time to add them or do we wait till they actually can provide space for this programming? So I think there's, there's more conversations to be had the other thing is, I mean, the way the, the, amendment, the um, amendment process is currently structured, we were supposed to be notified about it before the lab board approved it. And that's, that's a good way, it's a good process because then if we had changes, we could give the input then. Now, it's, now, that, now if we do have changes, it's gonna have to go back to the board, go back to the other towns. So unfortunately, that's where we are. But um, uh, one thing I think we should consider is given what happened with EDCO, should there be more safeguards in a type of collaborative mm -hmm. agreement like this, right? Um, and I think that's something that, that, that I'll think about in the next couple of days, about what can we add about undertaking large liabilities like that lease that ECHO did um, without approval by anybody outside of the board. Um, so that's just one thing that I'm thinking about. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Allison Hempe. Um, this may go back to the board. I didn't. I was just wondering on page two, the paragraph, it, it struck out, but it talks about uh, not, shall not carry on any activities not permitted to be carried on by any entity except for federal income tax under 501 3C code. And I didn't see that anywhere 
else. So I don't know, it's on page two, it's in the middle. It's next to the quench, it says question for Colby why it, it struck out, but I just, I didn't, you know, most of the stuff that struck out, it's like reworded or, or moved or something. I couldn't find that part and I didn't understand what it's doing. So I wanted to make sure it's not important. don't have an answer for that right now, but I'll. Yeah, that, that's, mm -hmm. no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I guess. I just have my question. So my question, it goes along. So there's an expectation right now that this is sent to Desi on April 30th. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, and it sounds like it's an entire year's timeline if that yep. date is missed. Is that accurate? Yeah. I, I, this is coming to you as swiftly as we had our hands on it. We, it, we had it, we didn't, I, I apologize for timelines and not having that it was in the works to you according to that timeline. We got it, I sent it to the chair for consideration on a first read and a second read because the executive director said they needed it by the end of April, otherwise it's going to be a full another year. Um, and the process through which to consider adding a member is exactly this process. They had approached, but were not publicly being considered as a member until this process plays out. And so now is when, if communities want to consider not adding Watertown as a member, we discuss that and determine whether or not to approve the agreement with it, them added. But the, but the <clears throat> lab board has already approved this document. Yeah. Well, they've approved it to bring to to, forward right. to their communities mm -hmm. to approve. Anything else? I had some questions. I'm just, <clears throat> in terms of the process, um, so we have just two school committee meetings in April in order to, so any amendments or changes, we're sort of on an accelerated schedule here. Um, do the, is it, for approval of the, the agreement, Every committee, ha every every town has to sign. Every town has to agree to it, right? Um, <clears throat> do you have a sense of what other, based on your conversations with other superintendents, what they're thinking? I haven't heard any concerns. A couple communities have done a first read. I don't think all have yet. And so you haven't heard like these I are the issues. Haven't heard if there have been other questions or issues I can ask, Mr. Yeah. Frankly, frankly, most other <laughs> school committee members aren't aren't attuned to how the collaborative operates. So I'm okay. not I'm not surprised. Yeah, all right. Um, well, okay. Uh, it just feels like w we've got to prioritize this and we shouldn't be the group that holds it up. If we can, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't, these are, these are issues that we can sort of get answers to, address, and get done by the 27th, by the second meeting of April, the latest, <clears throat> if we have to. Mr. Hainer. Are you, I just, may I, I just want to, are you proposing making any changes and then getting it all done and wrapped up by the, by the 13th for a second read or? Uh, so if there are minor changes, I don't I don't know what the what what the process is for the deadline for for Desi. Uh, you know I, I don't know if there's any flexibility. They've already reviewed it once. If we add a clause uh, a, a clause that you know financial obligations greater than one million yeah. have to come you know to 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 other to our for us to approval. What would Desi then hold it up for a whole year? I have no idea. But the process was. The draft amendment was supposed to go to us before the board, the lab board considered it. Yep. So, and they didn't do that. So, you know, mm. it, it's not our fault. If we raise legi legitimate concerns, I'm not trying to be petty. If we, we, have, if we have legitimate mm -hmm. concerns, then the process gets delayed. Mm -hmm. the, the building's not ready for, for, for occupancy anyways. It's not even, they haven't even started the project yet. Yeah, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer and then Mr. Second. When you mentioned Edco, uh, if I may, mm -hmm. when you mentioned Edco, are you, are you suggesting that we are legal take a, a closer look to the, at this document to make sure we have safeguards to prevent what happened to us in Edco? There are none. No. There are none. None no. now. So, no. you, so we would have to we would have to add one, mm -hmm. okay. and we would have to consult with legal about how to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, being the representative of this committee on yeah. the Ed Code dissolution, one member caused an awful lot of consternation, threats of litigation, cost, it was just terrible. And we should be made aware of that. Not to say that a lab is going to do that. They, they, yeah. From my perspective, they've been very good to us and stuff in the past. But putting a safeguard in there, I think, is very important for this board going forward. Well, this town. Just, just some one point on process. I think the, the way the process would work is there would be a motion by, by a member of the committee to amend, to propose an amendment, which would then have to go back. And let's say, let's say you, you proposed mm -hmm. an expenditure, expenditure approval process that said that any expenditure over X mm -hmm. has to be approved by each school committee, which, you know, I'm, I don't even know how I'd vote on that, just so we're clear. <laughs> but we have to talk about that. Yeah. Um, and but before that could actually happen, I would love to find a way to hear what other superintendents, school committees thought of that. I, and I don't know how we do that. So I mean, you know, just it feels like a us working in a vacuum and not having any dialogue with the other districts isn't the best way to go. Because I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. You know, I don't, I don't know what the expenditure. Approval. I mean, the organization I work, there's a limit, right? There's all sorts of limits. The board has all sorts of things. Yeah. There's committees. It's all, and it's been approved by a board, and it's just one board <laughs> debating the thing. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know how you do this with all these different communities, and I'm, I just don't know. And I don't know how, and for that reason, I don't know how I would vote on your motion until I saw it and thought about the, and understood the process. Is this about this specific? So. Well, I, I, you were you're, you were next, but if Jane is responding to Mr. I'll, I'll let Jane go. No, more about what the risk is of delaying. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so go can ahead. we let? Okay. Uh, as a former member of the Minuteman Regional School Committee, our dealings with Watertown were a little difficult. Uh, they were very happy to send lots of students to the <coughs> Minuteman as long as we didn't want them to become a member of the district. So they were sending a significant, they, they were like the second biggest non-member town sending kids in, uh, but didn't want any part of membership because it would cost them more. Uh, and when we rebuilt the high school and offered them again a chance to come into Minuteman, um, when uh, Belmont and some of the other towns left, they said, no, no, thank you. We, we were in it for the discount. So. Watertown, Watertown makes me a little anxious. So I, I definitely would like to see the cost benefit to having Watertown come in as a member versus continuing to charge them a non-member rate, which sounds like it would be more advantageous for the rest of us. Ms. Morgan. So are there Watertown kids at lab now? Yes, they pay the full tuition. They're paying the full. So <coughs> the advantages of hitting April 30th are largely for Watertown to be able to do that or that we have an agreement mm -hmm. lest they decide they're going to put a, I don't know, dog kennel into their high school space instead of housing <laughs> lab, right? I mean, like. Yes, yeah, so if they were to become members, they, we wouldn't have access, obviously, to CBT programming space right away, but we, they would be able to provide programming space mm -hmm. um, to the collaborative. And if they have, if they can expand programming space, right now, labs enrollment is not significantly larger than it has been in previous years, but the referrals are through the roof. So it's possible that they will have more enrollment in coming years if they can staff programming appropriately if they have more if Watertown is able to give space mm -hmm. then we have the space for more enrollment um, we have had to constrain a little bit of space at the Audison in particular because of our growing enrollment at the middle school level so and they we will have more space available when the new when the new uh, high school comes online but we don't have some of that it will have expanded capacity then but we don't right now so one of the benefits to the collaborative right now is potentially more programming space though it's not the CBT mm -hmm. space that we will ultimately have access to got it and I think this is maybe a question for mr. Cardin but this this Watertown access doesn't solve the problem of, of our kids 
who want to go to Minuteman but don't have enough academic support there, right? Because they had Minuteman used to have a program where they they almost had like a, a sub separate like support program at Minuteman for some of our kids so that they could better access what was happening at Minuteman. But this isn't going to replace that, correct? I'm not aware of Minuteman having. No. There was a lab program at yeah. Minuteman. Lab hosted a program at Minuteman. We paid tuition to it, and when they rebuilt Minuteman, the um, superintendent um, was willing to charge a substantial fee to Lab to rent space in the new building. And so that was not, um, the collaborative couldn't manage the, um, the exorbitant amount that, that they were asking for Minuteman. So that programming shifted to Burlington High School for a small time. Um, but Burlington High School did not have the comprehensive um, programming that Minuteman had that lab students had access to. So the Watertown offers that potential that for a while they explored working with Medford um, at their comprehensive high school and hosting a program there that was ultimately did not pan out. And so both the opportunity for that, which won't come online for a little while, um, is one piece of it. And then the piece that works, maybe uh, Mr. Mason can explain a little bit more, is the amount of space that you give determines the um, credits that we, we receive back. So each member district has a different, essentially, rate at which they're paying based on the amount of square footage they are contributing to it. So to, to calculate what it would be with the change, I think it would be a little bit more tricky <laughs> um, to figure out given not knowing what that square footage is ultimately going to be that they devote to the programming. One, one, one thought. One thought is that um, if if it's possible to have a dialogue with a bunch of the superintendent, and I bring Len in to kind of express this issue and just see where it might go. It would be helpful just to have some some sort of conversation with other districts to see what they're thinking, mm -hmm. rather than just go to you and you go to them and you go back to us. It just might be better to have one member of the committee go. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, that would just be more. Again, had, had we known this was going to be going to, was, was happening, I would have gotten involved much earlier. Well, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. So, but I mean, <coughs> happy, to go to, happy to go to a lab board meeting or. or yeah, just to kind anything. of talk about it. Because an expenditure approval process, by the way, is a very complicated thing that a lot of people have to agree to. And it's like just a $1 million or any arbitrary number, it becomes really complicated. Dr. Allison, yeah. I just want to echo my support for Mr. Cardin's idea because I think we owe it in the term of fiscal responsibility yeah. mm -hmm. to make sure, I mean, to do what we can not to have something like that happen again. And I understand it may be complicated, yeah. but I think we should look into what are the options um, because the standard ones failed us last time and so I think we need to be looking at it next level up. So it sounds like, uh, just to recap some of what I'm hearing here um, or rephrase, it sounds like it's the, if Watertown joins, whether it's this year or maybe next year, it's not just a plus for them, it's also a plus for us in that they're offering access to something that we don't have access to right, right. now, right? And it's something yeah. that actually sounds important. Definitely. And yes. so yes. I think that's really, I, I don't think we should be, I mean, I think we need to get this agreement right. And mm -hmm. if Desi's not willing to, to move their deadlines or, or something, then maybe we need to wait another year if we can't get it all. I mean, we, we should try and get it done by the deadline, but but I think we should be, I think we should be trying to get Watertown in because I don't know where else we can go because we've already eliminated every school that I can think of that offers that kind of, of programming. And uh, so those are my thoughts. So you'll bring these, share these questions ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, you'll keep Mr. Cardin apprised of any Sure. I'm a little <coughs> unclear on, like, uh, Mr. Thielman's suggestion and Mr. Cardin's follow-up. Well, I mean, I, I, what I'm thinking is, so there's the, the board responsibilities. It says the board is responsible for approving all expenditures, including amount of leverage to contracts, borrowing, and the purchase and sale of fixed assets and real estate. So <clears throat> you, they're, they're, I don't know where the conversation can go, but it could go, to, into, it could go to a point where it says that any debt over X mm -hmm. 
needs to come back to all of the school all of the school committees for approval. Mm -hmm. That could be that could be it. I'm not sure where it could go, but for that to happen, we'd all all the that has to be amended. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to agree to it, and it would be good to have a dialogue first informally with folks from other towns to see what they think of this process and what, how it would work. Because I think that's what you're talking about, sort of like a, a you, we don't want to have a, a repeat of ETCO, right? Nobody wants that. So we want to prevent that from happening. So one way to prevent that from happening that's been proposed is for the school committees to have a veto over a debt or over something. I don't know what that something is. It could be a debt over a certain amount of money. It could be a loan over a certain amount of money. It could be a deficit. I don't know. We'd have to kind of work that language out. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. So I'm saying, does that make sense? It doesn't make any sense. I can talk after. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to clarify if that should all happen. So one of the d disadvantages of not is that if we wait a year, we're, we're operating under the old yeah. agreement that is exceptionally outdated. Yeah, I know. That that could be an amendment after mm -hmm. this, right? To for another mm -hmm. year. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out what timeline expectations are. Sure. Two things. One, I wasn't. I think it's not that we're all going to veto it. It's that we want better information if we're essentially <coughs> agreeing to an expenditure of the magnitude, you know, a million or, or yeah. whatever, whatever our cutoff is. Um, but do we have? Ha I mean, can't we separate approving Watertown and the agree? I mean, and changing the agreement? I'd have to ask. Because can't we get the new agreement set so that it, but not necessarily by April 30th, but get that. And so then when water, you know, water towns there, we've got the whole agreement and it's all worked out and there we go. Mr. Slickman. I just think that the uh, provision that has been suggested for a structure for large expenditures and commitments would probably be met favorably by the other towns currently in the collaborative is they were all EDCO members and had to struggle with this as well. Um, so I think that maybe even if town council could advise us on to how to write something like that. I know it's a busy time for town council because the town meeting is coming up, but uh, uh, th this is expensive for us as well. Okay, let's move on. Um, monthly financial report, Mr. Mason. All right. Good evening, school committee members. Um, <coughs> let us present to you. Uh, Sorry. Um, tonight I will present to you uh, the financial reports with finances as of February 28th, 2023. Um, in these reports, um, we're, it's included the general fund report that includes the town appropriation, which is the Chapter 70 funds and local contribution, as well as revolving and special revenue report as well as grants which include the FY23 entitlement grants, COVID-19 grants, uh, related grants, and the electronic bus grants. Um, so the general fund at a glance um, were projected to uh, end right now around $100,000, about $100,000, uh, give or take some dollars. Uh, I don't ever like to give an exact number, but, um, and these projections assume that all departments will um, spend their budgets down. Uh, we co we're, are coming up to our, our deadlines on spending internally, which is um, most departments will uh, see spending except a few exceptions um, around April 14th um, for procuring supplies and materials um, and then we will then look at what the remaining discretionary salary spending is looking like and uh, we'll have come up with a better projection um, that's more precise but currently this is the projected balance uh, along with 
expected transfers um, that are tied to some projects for the end of the year um, based on salary savings that we were having earlier in this year. Okay. Um, this is uh, currently the budget versus actual. The maroon uh, or reddish uh, lines are what we currently actually are spending at by percentage. And then the dark gray, and I'm seeing it here, is um, are what's encumbered. And then the black is what's remaining in each section. Just because a section may have a larger percentage, unspent does not represent do dollars wise because each category is slightly uh, has different amounts. The next is um, updating actual versus budget uh, by the month and um, you know we're currently in line as you can see based on the projection to still hit our numbers um, and be uh, have a balanced budget. Um, what I will say is that um, I believe the May uh, budget number uh, on here needs to be updated because of an extra pay cycle, so I'll do that update in the future periods as we uh, try to smooth this um, chart out. And then I wanted to touch base on uh, comparisons or driving factors from prior <coughs> years, uh, but budgets at this time. So um, last year at this time, our, our salaries were lower at this point. Obviously, we have contract agreements and, uh, you know, we do cost of living increases uh, for our personnel and ad personnel, but these are the top changing categories um, that are higher than last year at this time. And I will then add to that is that we are seeing our tuition right now is a little bit higher currently and on the general fund and um, elect power electricity is actually, uh, we're seeing some substantial cost increase. And this is actually not reflecting all current usage in power electricity. Um, currently, we're, we're paying market rate for the new high school um, meters. Um, the new rates will come into effect in the summer, um, which then we'll, we'll have a better uh, sustained and uh, spend rate for power electricity in fiscal 24. Um, we're also seeing that uh, our computer software, so we, we did a lot of investment after the pandemic in instructional software, but as well as modernizing processes and, you know, um, you know, leveraging softwares for what we're talking about, a digitization project, which is including with HR, HR software which is showing why we are increased in that area. And we've seen, due to the pandemic, increased paper costs, um, and as well as um, ventilation um, with the contract of services, um, there are some pending invoices that's required to it for a transfer that we'll speak about, but the, the figures are closer to um, uh, what's encumbered is going to be around $300,000 that's really already been spent. That's just not reflected in these financials for HVAC contractor services. Some positives are um, that, you know, we're saving on natural gas. It, was a, it wasn't as a cold of a winter, um, as well as our new building is ma driven mainly uh, based on electricity. So we're seeing savings on that offset. Um, we're also seeing, uh, due to the pandemic, we're not spending as much um, in the, on the medical surgical supplies. This was masks and whatnot during the pandemic. Um, we had some leftover costs back in last year um, in cleaning, cleaning materials. Um, and some of our instructional materials, as we've shifted away to use software, where some of our instructional materials are down right now, I do anticipate that to have some increased spending at the end of the year. And we are seeing um, uh, lower, uh, we, have, we don't have as many long-term subs uh, or expended at this moment this year or the rates are different. So that's what we've seen. So move on to the special revenue and revolving. Um, I just will say that 
we're spending those the the main balances down. Um, we're we're started off around five million balance in the beginning, and we're projecting what, based on current spending and transfers that need to hit um, the revolving funds, which include the circuit breaker. So we're going to be moving some tuition off of the general fund, um, but not to go over our allocation for this year. Um, we're projected to end the balances around 4.2 million. These also include some summer projects that we're anticipating to hit building rentals. And then last but not least, uh, just, you know, grants are also going as, as, as planned. More detailed uh, reports about the entitlement grants are in the memo. Um, and we do uh, intend to have some carryover at the end of the year um, tied to the ESSER, ESSER funds um, and some of our entitlement grants. And I will then actually I usually end there but I just wanted to add also there's <coughs> motions this evening um, one uh, motion is to accept the Afghan refugee support the schools grant this uh, this slide outlines how we intend to spend the twenty eight thousand um, dollars to support um, uh, Afghan students or, st or schools that have Afghan students in classes um, I if you have any questions about this grant um, I can further look into it, um, but um, I may not have all the answers for this evening. And last but not least, I just want to say the other motion is a for a budget transfer um, or budget transfers. Um, one, um, this has been changed from your memo. There's been an updated memo and, um, and obviously presentation, if you look at the presentation earlier, um, to reflect that it's no longer coming out of curriculum instruction. Uh, due to salary savings in the secondary budget, we would be uh, moving about $405,000 to the other budget category, transfer category to cover the increased costs in facilities, which include increased electricity costs. Um, uh, we have um, we've had a lot of ventilation work, and to, due to uh, not having the staff to actually do some of the HVAC work um, and the maintenance team, so the cost to contract out is substantially higher. Um, we also looking to uh, modernize, uh, start our digitization project um, in the central administration. What this will do is digitize documents that we are housed throughout the halls on this floor in our offices and make them electronic, which with the ultimate goal to save space, to help uh, reduce, reduce costs, well not reduce costs per, per se, but to help with the move when we intend to move to the new offices in the fall and um, give us opportunities to look at the, the maybe new acquired spaces if we do not need as much storage room we can use for other purposes. Um, it also will give us a chance to look at leveraging software that we already um, have, we already per procured um, and are using for other tasks like Munis, our financial system. It can hold documents and uh, we pay for the housing in the Tyler Content Manager. We also of uh, six, or we are in the process of implementing uh, Power School Records, which will be our new HR uh, system to support our HR documents and to give access to uh, our staff to see some of the, the documents in their files. And so, um, yeah, that with that project's in a, we're estimating the cost $200,000 and we're contracted with Conoco Mental to, to, to help us with that. There's no need to do the secondary trans, the other transfer that was down below um, for the Audison Day, we, um, the Gibbs and Audison Day. Um, we are we have found funding sources out of the Metco grant, so um, that is not going to be required. And um, that is it. I'll heed back to the chair. Mr. Cardin. So you heard what happens if you run a deficit tonight, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> After you. Yes, so, yes, so yes. You're not yes, going to run a deficit, yes. right? Yes, yes. 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 I move well, that we accept the refugee support. I don't have the exact wording up there. I move yeah. that, that oh. we accept the refugee support. To schools grant in the amount of 28163 Thank you, Madam Chair. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Thielman, seconded by Mr. Hainer. Discussion? Can you just explain where the grant came from? Um, oh, I, I forgot. You want to go ahead. Can um, I forgot my notes. I just... There are 
I'm not sure how detailed I am, so if you find your notes, you can yes, be more specific. Um, there uh, are statistics that the state keeps on students who are placed in districts who qualify as refugees, and we had a sufficient number of students who qualified as refugees coming from Afghanistan that the state informed us that we were eligible to apply for this grant, and so we did, and we were allocated this amount. Their awesome. actual Thank status you. is humanitarian parolee, but they, they'd like Thank to, you. they would like to have been refugees, but they weren't declared that. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. Um, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That's unanimous. I, I move we make the budget transfers as described by Mr. Mason. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Cardin, seconded by Mr. Hainer. Discussion, Mr. Schlickman? Yeah, I... I like to ask Mr. Mason pertaining to the digitization yes. um, that we're going to be putting documents into PowerSchool and to Munis. What is the ownership of those documents and will we have a backup in the event that we desire to change vendors? So yes, um, the plan is to have Konica Minota, when they scan all these documents, to provide it onto a media source, mm -hmm. um, as well as we're working with the IT department on mm -hmm. trying to find alternative backups um, in a more in a, in a secured kind of cloud storage solution. Um, we are we're this is the initial discussions mm -hmm. with Konica, so we've chosen them. They gave us an initial proposal. Um, some of the solutions they they also are. The professionals they are the ones that are the specialists specialize on this so um, they will meet with the special education department mm -hmm. um, and the HR department next week to discuss further about the projects and what their needs are for those individual departments to then um, ensure that they can also provide solutions right that mm -hmm. you know those documents are going to be in a secured place and how we will go forward some of the so some of the um, Solutions will be that we'll be keeping some of the doc documents, mm -hmm. but they'll be in a controlled area, but not the entire set of documents. There's also to speak on like the HR side. Um, there's going to be a redundancy that mm -hmm. we ant anticipate to have, which is where the power school records will be able to house our employee documents to be the face for where our mm -hmm. per, our employees can go and access documents and mm -hmm. do any changes and whatnot. But then there's going to be the also the, the redundant on the Tyler content side, which is municipal, which you have a long-term mm -hmm. standing relationship with, um, with the town and, the, and, Tyler, and Tyler. So so you're doing the state reporting out of power school? <clears throat> which state reporting? Uh, the... The, the are you talking student, about EPIMS? Are you, are you talking e about e SIM? EPIMS, SIMS, yeah. It's EPIMS, SIMS is done at a power school. Yeah, okay. And so we're going to be looking at solutions in terms of whether, you know, IT is, is a, we had an initial conversation this week actually about IT saying, well, could we put some of the student records into and leverage power schools, but seeing what that cost would look like if there's going to mm -hmm. be additional costs to do that on the school side, the student side. the We've paid for the records portion, which is, mm -hmm. It's a very powerful tool, but it's also a data warehouse where we own the data. I mm -hmm. don't think there's going to be a cost to if we ever need to take out the, the data mm -hmm. at a later time. Even if we lost or had a problem with our physical media mm -hmm. or the other redundant cloud op op option that the IT department has, um, there, there will be options for us to retrieve that data. So I, I don't I feel confident where with this process. And it's also about establishing workflows. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of manual processes that we have mm -hmm. that we need to kind of move from the paper process to now how do we watch this through and see it on a on a on the actually leverage our technology that we have that the town has invested in already. Uh, I've lived with a seventeen year nightmare of how to get stuff out of EZIEP. They sort of had us trapped into it. Yeah. And there was they they were totally uncooperative, which meant we had to renew because we couldn't get it out and move it into a uh, into a SIS module. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I'm sort of worried about digitization in terms of do we have ownership of our own stuff and can we move it if we so desire. Okay. Dr. Allison Ampey. I'm assuming security is also a concern. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we have our IT team that's going to mm -hmm. be partnering with us on the project to make sure all the solutions are, mm -hmm. are going to be secured. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, not on, in, a, in a safe way that mm -hmm. they either can manage or they can find a vendor that will securely manage. Okay. 
I so forget. It was motioned by Mr. Cardin and seconded by Mr. Hainer or vice versa. But um, <laughs> so transferring um, both of these budget transfers. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That's unanimous. I, that's all the anything else on finances. Um, <clears throat> superintendent's report, Dr. Homan. Yep. Okay, a few brief updates tonight. Um, first, a few events that are coming up this weekend and to celebrate from last weekend. Uh, this weekend, tomorrow, we will be hosting our Coffee and Conversations hire, annual hiring event that the Saturday. Superintendent's Diversity Committee puts up. Saturday. Hmm? Saturday. 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 Oh, it's, tomorrow's not Saturday. Saturday. Um, Saturday. <laughs> not tomorrow. <laughs> Don't come tomorrow. <laughs> the high school kids will be here from 10 to 12. Um, so, yeah. no, Saturday uh, from 10 to 12 <clears throat> will be the Coffee and Conversations hiring event in the lobby of Arlington High School. We have many participants signed up. I think the last count was about 25 folks said that they were going to come, which is very exciting. And also this weekend, um, as Michelle Rue mentioned, we have our Arlington High School musical, Into the Woods, that I cannot wait to attend. It's going to be fantastic, as it always is. Last weekend, there was the Bishop play, a spectacular production of Beauty and the Beast. Thompson held its first multicultural festival in many years, um, and Arlington Metco hosted the, their annual APS, annual Bridging Two Communities Family Walk. Uh, this is the third time that they have hosted this walk, and there was a record turnout of over 100 community members, and it was a beautiful day, and the sun was shining, and we walked through the Boston Arboretum and it was absolutely fantastic. So it was great to see so many people out in support of our um, two communities coming together. Um, I want to give an update on the curriculum reconsideration process, which is policy IJR, the school committee manual. We do have a current um, uh, challenge of our human growth and development curriculum that is going to be under consideration over the next month or so. There will be a public hearing at the meeting on April 14th, and that will be announced to the public at least 48 hours in advance. After the public hearing and after we have an opportunity to hear from community members, um, when we send out the announcement, we will also send out the um, verbiage of the challenge itself, what's being challenged, what's being reconsidered, as well as any resources that the community members may want to look at to help them understand what they would want to come and tell us. Um, after that, it will be reviewed by a team that includes students, parents, teachers, and administrators, and then there will be a recommendation and vote by the school committee at this regular meeting on the 27th at the end of the month of April. It was the 13th, not the 14th. The slide's correct. You mm -hmm. just said the 14th. Mm -hmm. So April okay, 13th the, the is the... April 13th regular the, meeting is yeah. the hearing. Mm -hmm. The April 27th regular meeting is the recommendation. Um, the committee will issue a recommendation to me, and then I will issue the recommendation to the committee for consideration. We also have several admin hiring searches that are currently active. The Bishop Principal uh, Screening Committee met... Uh, this week and we'll meet next week to meet with candidates. They have those initial interviews next week after which they will forward some finalists for my consideration and to meet members of the Bishop community. The bracket principal opening is still posted and will be posted through the end of next week. Director of Communications and Family Engagement as well as Director of Research Data and Accountability are also currently posted and will be posted through the end of next week. And you have updated in section projections um, and enrollments in your packet. I want to draw attention to some updated section projections as kindergarten enrollments are still coming in and keeping a close eye on them. Um, but we have we are anticipating that we might need fewer sections of kindergarten at Pierce, um, an increase of sections at Stratton in grade three. Um, and potential adjustments of sections at Thompson for space consideration reasons. Um, and to make sure that those sections are evenly um, staffed. And then also at Bracket, there's, there was one section that was very under-enrolled, um, and we have eliminated that section, and we're keeping a pretty close eye, and I'm just pulling this up because it helps me remember. Um, we're keeping a close eye on um, Bracket kindergarten sections as well. We had projected that to be four sections. Um, we're not quite sure if it will be four sections or three, uh, and then here's the Pierce section that has changed, the Stratton section that has changed, and the Bracket section that has changed at grade four. So I'm happy to take any questions. Dr. Allison Ampey. 
Um, I'm going to keep doing this every time until the number goes down. <laughs> I'm concerned about Thompson and uh, both first and second grade numbers. Mm -hmm. I have talked with Ms. Donato about how she would want to support those two grade levels if those sections stay at that size. I'm not happy with, and, and actually Bishop to second grade. Um, so I'm registering my concern. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I wanted to um, offer up to the committee a resolution on universal meals for all as a first read um, with the bill going to the legislature and um, the governor extending the free meals for the rest of this year and then into next year I wanted um, the Arlington School Committee to consider um, advocating for universal school meals. Um, in the future. I think that Ms. Hansen and Ms. Vaughn did a nice job explaining all the reasons. I can also just share that as someone who works in the schools, um, having free meals for the last few years has really um, even the playing field in terms of um, stigma for students, in terms of relationships with food and with one another around food. Um, and I, I think it's important as part of our um, strategic plan and our vision and mission that we support um, free meals for students. Mr. Schlickman. This train seems to be moving, so I'm wondering how my colleagues would feel about suspending the rules to uh, go immediately to second read and adoption. <clears throat> so moved. <laughs> second. <laughs> second. We have a motion by Mr. Thielman, seconded by Mr. Schlickman to, to suspend the rules. Suspend the rules to have a second read. Discussion? Those in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Okay, that passes. Move to support the resolution as presented. Second. And authorize the, the chair to sign. Motion by Mr. Hainer, seconded by Mr. Schlickman. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank, thank you all. Consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. <coughs> Warrant number 23219 in the amount of $916,526.04, dated March 21st, 2023. School committee meet minutes, March 16th, 2023. Approval of field trip OMS Drama Club to New York City. Approval of assistant director of high school counseling job description. To approve is presented. That would be move adoption of the consent agenda. Second. 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 We have a motion by Mr. Hainer, seconded by Mr. Cardin. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Subcommittee liaison reports and announcements. Budget, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, we met last week and we mainly hashed over numbers that were in the strategic plan, which you have now seen the results of. So. Community relations, Mr. Hainer. We had a hiccup on the chat last week. It's been resolved going forward. Nothing else to report at this time. Curriculum Instruction Assessment and Accountability, Ms. Morgan. We met on Monday and we talked about the strategic plan that we approved tonight. Facilities, Mr. Thielman. Facilities, no report. <clears throat> Policy and Procedure, Mr. Schlickman. Uh, no report. Arlington High School Building Committee, Mr. Thielman. I just wanted to, the committee uh, is meeting on Tuesday, but I just wanted to give everyone an update to make sure we're all on the same page. The, the, you know, the project, the high school project is in phase two mm -hmm. right now. This has been always been the phase with the tightest and most complex schedule because we had to demo one building and build a new one. Um, <clears throat> we voted last fall to uh, delay the demolition and abatement of Fusco House and the Blue Gyms to allow us to open up with a full schedule. That's also going to happen. Um, and the schedule turnover of the building for phase two is at the end of September. However, there have been um, some delays with 
uh, the pouring of slabs, concrete slabs throughout the building. And so it's possible uh, that there's going to be a delay in the, in the turnover of the classrooms to the district um, into a date at, at, after the end of September. The um, committee won't know for sure about that until May. And at the May meet, after, the, after that meeting in May, when we have good data, I'll report out um, where we're at. So that's what that means. It, in all likelihood, the, the safety valve and the, and the timing of the turnover uh, are the um, district offices and the preschool. Uh, just like the, the auditorium was delayed last time in opening by eight weeks, it's possible that the, uh, the district office will, will remain here for a little bit longer after the turnover and the preschool won't be able to move in on time. But the preschool is at Monotomy and the district offices are here. That's the summary. All right, superintendent evaluation, Mr. Cardin. Nothing. Liaison report, announcements, Mr. Hainer. Once again, I would like to thank you all and I have one <coughs> word, it's been vivid. <laughs> Future agenda item. Be nice to the next person. <laughs> we were nice Point to you. Nicer. <laughs> nicer. Mr. Schiffman. Uh, just as a uh, last tribute to Mr. Hainer, I'd like to ask the chair to recognize Mr. Hainer for any motion to adjourn. So move. Oh, one second. I also. Oh, <laughs> uh, Len, we were doing thank so well. I thank Miss Exton for chairing the committee this year. Yes. yes. Great yes. job. Here, here. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion. Meeting is adjourned. All right.